Families often have conflicts or financial problems, but there are also families who manage to stick together and make it through everyday life. It's pretty clear which one is happier, don't you think? My name is Rachel. I've been called an oddball since I was a child. I don't know what's different about me. I just know people say I'm different. Being called different isn't the problem. The real issue is being ignored by my own parents. This led to a lonely childhood for me. I've always been sensitive to people's emotions and can somehow understand what they're thinking. I don't know why I can do this. It's not like I can always see or feel it, but it's as natural to me as moving my hand or breathing. I found it strange and couldn't understand why others couldn't do the same. There was a time when I felt a bad vibe from a colleague my father brought home from work. I warned my mother to be careful with that person, but she didn't listen. Later on, that colleague tricked my father into signing a contract as a guarantor for a loan. Although my mother didn't take my advice, when my father stepped away from the table with his colleague, I told him, Dad, something is telling me that the word joint is dangerous. I don't know what joint means, but please be careful. So, my father hesitated and refused to sign as a joint guarantor. Thanks to that, when my colleague went bankrupt and couldn't repay the debt, my father was able to avoid taking on all the debt. Another day, when I was shopping with my mother, I felt a wave of discomfort coming from behind us. When I turned around, I felt this bad feeling coming from a man wearing sunglasses and a hat. I said, Mom, let's take that side street. I grabbed my mother's hand and moved to the side street. My mother was confused and asked what was wrong, but just as we moved, we heard someone shout, Thief, from the street we had been on. The man with the bad vibe had snatched a woman's purse and ran off. The woman fell and got hurt badly. If we hadn't moved to the side street, the man's target would have been my mother. Things like this happened often, and people started to think I was strange and mysterious. My parents began to avoid me, and I felt lonely and isolated. What seemed normal to me was not normal to others. I started keeping my thoughts to myself. I stopped expressing my feelings because I knew normal people don't feel what I feel. If I didn't say anything, they wouldn't think I was weird. I would just be like a normal kid. I have a sister, Julie, who's four years younger than me. Unlike me, Julie is a regular kid. As the years went by, I became more withdrawn, but Julie just got cuter and more charming. It was clear who everyone preferred. Our parents started to favor Julie over me. They would say, Julie is such a lovely girl, but Rachel seems to be a bit on the darker side. They noticed I had become less odd lately, but still thought I was different. What they called odd was me not talking about things only I could sense. It was my way of dealing with the world. I was tired of how this ability of mine was torturing me, so I tried hard to suppress it. I wondered if my attempts to hide myself and appear normal were making me seem abnormal, or if once labeled as the odd kid, that image just couldn't be erased. I grew up without much love from my parents. On the other hand, Julie received all the love, including what should have been mine. Julie, who was spoiled and pampered, sensed our parents being cold and distant toward me. She started to look down on me. I don't like being around you. Your gloominess rubs off on me. I'm so cute, but your loner image brings me down. Julie started to insult me whenever she got the chance. Our parents lightly scolded Julie, but they never seriously tried to correct her. When I was in 8th grade and Julie was in 5th grade, she was scouted by a talent agency on the street. I knew it. It's because I'm cute. They said I could even appear on TV, Julie said, pleased with herself. She started dreaming big, and our parents didn't seem entirely against it. You should calm down and think carefully. I sensed something shady about this. I spoke up, expressing the intuition that I had long suppressed because I didn't want Julie to get into trouble. Julie, who didn't know about my unique ability, said, What's your problem? Are you just jealous because you're not cute and nobody approached you? Don't say weird things and stop interfering with me. She seemed furious, 
Even my parents, who knew about my ability, either forgot about it or were too excited about Julie standing on the glamorous stage. They sided with Julie and criticized me. After that, I resolved to remain silent again. I told myself that there was nothing good in saying unnecessary things. One day, a student teacher came to my junior high school. He was a male college student who graduated from the school and wanted to be a physical education teacher. As he shared his dreams about education and gave a strong greeting, the teacher and students, especially the female students, were charmed. When he responded cheerfully to the girls' excited cheers, I sensed a dark aura from him. I had always vowed to hide my unique abilities, but seeing my classmates potentially in danger, I decided to break my self-imposed rule. I chose a teacher who seemed understanding and talked to her. I know this is sudden, but please believe me and help me, I said. The teacher was puzzled by my sudden request, but agreed to stake out a certain location after school, just as I asked. I didn't tell the teacher the details. I had no reason to think she would believe me, but the fact that she agreed to help without any explanation made me think she wasn't an ordinary person either. The next day, the school was in an uproar. The male student teacher was arrested for violating a public nuisance prevention ordinance. The location where the teacher staked out was near the girls' restroom. Within 10 minutes of starting the stakeout, the student teacher appeared, entered the girls' restroom, and installed a video camera. The teacher caught him in the act. Thanks to that, the female students were saved from being secretly filmed, and their dignity was protected. Meanwhile, my sister, who had joined the talent agency, was proudly telling everyone about it. But there were no real lessons or auditions, she only had to pay expensive membership and lesson fees. Then, suddenly, the agency closed down, leaving an empty shell. In short, my sister was scammed. She cried and screamed, directing her anger at me. It's all because you said weird things. My future is ruined, and it's all your fault. It didn't make any sense, but my sister seemed to truly believe it. Maybe that's the only way she could handle it. For me, it was a disaster and a nuisance. Our parents didn't say such unreasonable things, but their attitude became more distant toward me and more supportive of my sister. I ended up feeling lonely again, as the odd one out. I was happy that I could help everyone at school, but I was terrified that my actions would corner me. That's when I received a call from the teacher who had listened to my story, asking me to come to the staff room. Worried that I would be labeled as strange again, I opened the door to the teacher's staff room. You knew something like that was going to happen, didn't you? The teacher asked me in a low voice, without any preamble. Thinking there was no point in pretending, I gathered my courage and told the teacher about my mysterious power. I thought so. I know there are very few people like you, the teacher said. For the first time, someone showed understanding for my situation. The teacher said they knew someone with a power like mine, and that's why they could understand. Actually, that person is my aunt, and I've been listening to her stories for a long time. You must be worried about a lot of things because of your power. Maybe getting advice from someone who's been in your shoes will help clear your mind. Saying that, the teacher introduced me to the person. The person looked at me with kind eyes and said, It's natural to be worried, but you don't need to suffer. I was drawn to their gentle yet deep eyes that seemed to see through everything. The person's name was Hannah, and she had the same kind of power as me since she was a child. She had experienced a lot of struggles and hiding herself throughout her life. The stories from my senior who had gone through the same experiences helped me release my worries and doubts. From this day on, my interactions with Hannah began. I called Hannah my mentor, but she just gave a wry smile and said, please don't. Thanks to Hannah, or rather my mentor, I changed. I had been living my life quietly, trying to stay unnoticed, but as my awareness grew, I gradually began to live a normal life as an ordinary girl. However, since the incident with the talent agency, I haven't been able to reconcile with my sister. If anything, it feels like we're drifting apart. 
it's become normal for her not to talk to me, and when she does, it's just to complain or insult me for no reason. I often have no idea what triggers her mood switches. My power couldn't predict my sister's emotional changes either. Just because you got into college doesn't mean you're all that. It's not even that great of a school, and you're so happy-go-lucky, she would say. My sister, who had hoped to get into her top-choice high school, ended up at her second-choice school. Because of that, she got mad when I got into my first-choice college. It's not like I bragged to her, she just dissed me because of her own frustrations. Our parents only tried to appease my upset sister and kept their distance from me, as if telling me to stay away from her. It seemed that my sister didn't like the fact that I had become brighter since meeting my mentor. To my sister, I had to be a dark and gloomy girl who was inferior to her. But my sister is really smart. It was surprising that she failed her high school entrance exams. Of course, she was filled with frustration and poured all of that into studying at her new high school. As a result, she was at the top of her class for all four years and got accepted into a prestigious national university on her first try. I got into the most difficult university. Your college doesn't even come close to mine, she boasted. I lightly responded with, that's true to my satisfied sister because I knew nothing good would come from getting too involved with her. However, my sister thought that my light reaction was belittling her accomplishments and unleashed a barrage of verbal abuse at me. Both my parents were at their wit's end with my sister, who couldn't be calmed down once she lost her temper. All they could do was watch nervously. They blamed me for causing the trouble and eventually ended up calling me a troublemaker. I wanted to argue back about who the real problem child was, but I always swallowed my words to avoid complicating things further. Setting aside my sister's issues, as I approached college graduation, I had to seriously confront my own career path. I was no longer as introverted as I used to be. I still struggled with socializing and had little confidence in building good relationships with others. My ability allowed me to detect people's negative emotions. While I could sense positive emotions too, it seemed people were more prone to negative ones, which made detecting such negativity painful for me. Throughout my school life, I was tormented by these swirling negative emotions and had come close to losing faith in people. Could someone like me really manage to work at a company? I decided to consult my mentor about this dilemma. I wanted to learn how she had overcome similar issues as I was sure she had faced them as well. I have experienced the same worries as you. Maybe you should consider doing the kind of work I do, she suggested. My mentor used to work as a fortune teller and a counselor, helping people resolve their problems. She could use her abilities to their fullest extent and contribute to the world and people around her. Also, she was able to work freelance, which meant she didn't have to belong to any organization. This way, there were fewer chances of getting entangled in human relationships or being affected by other people's emotions. It's the perfect job for people like us, she said. Encouraged by my mentor, I decided to pursue the same line of work. She taught me everything from how to do the job to how to acquire clients. Nowadays, thanks to the internet, it's possible to work from home without any issues. When I told my parents and sister that I would not seek employment after graduation and work from home instead, they responded, What's that? What kind of job is that? Seems so dumb. You'll be home all the time. At least make sure to do the housework. Can you even make a living doing that? How will you cover living expenses? Well, as long as you contribute to the household, do whatever you want. While I expected such a response from my parents, it made me feel a little lonely that they didn't support me more. I felt sad thinking about their demands for housework and money. My mood darkened, and so my life working from home began. At first, I didn't have any job requests and struggled day by day. But with my mentor's help, I gradually got the hang of it and started to make a living. For about a year, I couldn't contribute financially to the household, so I focused on doing the housework. My dad seemed unsatisfied, 
but my mom was relieved and kept him in check. After about a year, when I finally started contributing financially, my dad mocked me by saying, Oh, finally, you're able to earn some pocket change, huh? But I could tell he was actually quite satisfied with the money. However, even though I was contributing, the amount of housework I had to do didn't decrease, and our lives remained unchanged. Then, after another three years, my sister graduated from college and secured a job at a foreign company. Unlike you, I'm an elite. You're just unemployed, living at the bottom of the barrel. It's so depressing to have you as a sister, she would say. My sister, who had successfully landed a job, started to belittle me for working from home. What are you even doing working from home? That's just like playing. You're nothing more than a parasite living at home. At times, she'd say, it's really weird not to work outside. I'm working hard, earning everyone's respect, and now I've been promoted to teen leader. My pay is going to increase, and I'm probably earning about five times more than you. There's no way a homedy like you can earn that much. My sister, who was promoted to teen leader after only a year and a half at the company, kept one-upping me and looking down on me. She boasted about her good salary, but hardly contributed any money to the household, and didn't help with the chores at all. Laundry, cleaning, preparing meals, everything was dumped onto mom and me. When I say mom and me, mom mostly left it to me, so I was basically doing everything. Whenever I said to her, Julie, you should take care of yourself a little. You shouldn't just spend all your money on fun. You should contribute to the household too. She just dismissed me, saying, you, the unemployed, can handle the chores. I'm saving my money for my future. Our parents also just let her do what she pleased for some inexplicable reason of, it's Julie, it can't be helped. I was used to my current lifestyle, and it was a comfortable environment for me to work, so I wanted to keep it that way. But I was starting to consider how to take care of myself. Then came the bombshell announcement from my sister. Without any prior warning, both our parents and I were taken aback as she continued. He's a real elite with an annual income. She sneered at me and added, Marriage is just a pipe dream for someone unemployed like you, isn't it? She said she would bring her boyfriend over the next Sunday. With the rapid succession of sudden developments, Sunday came, and we were still reeling. The man my sister brought along looked like a successful young man, impeccably dressed in a sharp suit. Nice to meet you. My name is Jack, he said. I would like to ask for your permission to marry Julie, Jack said, greeting us properly and showing good manners. Isn't he wonderful? Just as I said, I'm going to be so happy with this man, Julie gushed. So Jack, what do you do for a living? Dad managed to ask, clearly impressed by Jack's presence. Yes, I'm currently training at a company that my father knows, Jack replied. We were puzzled by the word training, and then Julie said gleefully, his father is the president. He's training now to take over the presidency in the future. My sister seemed over the moon about becoming a future president's wife. Afterward, we had various conversations, and Jack left stylishly. There were a few things that made me raise an eyebrow during the conversation, but my parents were thrilled with the high-status man. However, I felt an inexplicable dark shadow from that seemingly refreshing and good-natured man, Jack. It was something only I could sense, so I didn't know how to explain it. I could no longer remain silent, fearing that marrying a man with hidden issues would make my sister unhappy. Julie, you've only been dating him for less than four months. You might want to understand him a little more before deciding to get married, I cautioned, driven by a strong gut feeling. Sis, he's an elite and a future CEO. You won't find anyone better than him. Oh, I see, you're jealous, aren't you? You're bitter because you're comparing your life to my happy one. Poor jobless sis, she retorted. Even our parents got angry at me for interfering with Julie's happiness. You're just unemployed, so at the very least, stop interfering with your sister's happiness, they said. 
It was clear that our parents were hoping to secure a comfortable old age by marrying Julie off to a wealthy man. Frustrated by my inability to effectively communicate my concern about the dark shadow I sensed looming over Julie, my head was spinning. In the meantime, the two got engaged, and a meeting between both families took place. Jack's parents, like him, carried an air of freshness about them, but I felt the same ominous cloud hidden behind them. However, I was unable to convey this danger to my overjoyed sister and parents. Before I knew it, the day of the wedding had arrived. The CEO of our company is attending today's reception. Can you comprehend how much I'm appreciated and anticipated in my company? I guess it's a kind of honor that a shut-in like you wouldn't understand, my sister said gleefully before leaving the house. She always included some derogatory words directed at me. At the wedding ceremony held at a hotel, the couple who pledged eternal love to each other entered the reception hall. Watching my sister, who was beaming with joy, I worried about how long this happiness would last. As my sister mentioned, the CEO made a keynote speech, full of praise for her, which delighted her. Once the speeches were over, food and drinks were served to each table. There were all sorts of delicious-looking dishes, but I started to feel a sense of discomfort. Gradually, I realized that no dishes were being served in front of me. At first, I thought my meal was just late, but other tables were already being served drinks, appetizers, and so on, one after another. Clearly, something was off. Nothing was being delivered to me. People at the same table began to notice this oddity and started whispering among themselves. At that moment, my sister came over to me and whispered into my ear with laughter in her voice. We didn't prepare free meals for the unemployed. After all, it's such a waste to serve such food to a jobless person. You should just eat potato chips at home. Just leave your gift money and go home. This outrageous remark was spoken loudly in my ear, and my ears rang. Jack, sitting at the groom's table, was grinning and nodding. Even our parents, who at first seemed surprised, said, Well, it's true, Rachel is jobless after all. I was first taken aback, then a wave of anger surged up within me. I never thought you'd stoop this low, sis. Mom and Dad, this is unacceptable. How could you accept such rudeness? My parents just scowled at me, never bothering to reprimand my sister. Fine, I get it. I'm leaving, but don't come crying to me later, I said. You sound like a sore loser, she shot back. Amidst the chaos of this unbelievable turn of events, a man suddenly stood up. Sorry to interrupt, I'm the groom's brother, Larry. My brother and parents are trash but it seems the bride is even worse. I can't take it anymore, said the man who introduced himself as Larry. He continued, Dad, your company went bankrupt five months ago, didn't it? Pretending to still be a CEO is just a scheme to mooch off the bride and her family. Jack will never become a CEO. He's planning to leech off his wife while pretending otherwise. He's unemployed now. Larry's words caused a commotion among the guests but my sister was the most heated. What do you mean you lied to me? What do you mean unemployed? She demanded, her face turning from red to blue, her eyes welling up with tears. Our parents, their assumptions proven wrong, began to yell and curse. The anguished cries of my family echoed throughout the venue. The groom and his parents remained silent, looking sulky. Before the ceremony, I had received a confession and apology from Larry and asked him to speak his mind without reservation if something happened during the reception. As my sister was berating Jack with a wrathful face, another man couldn't take it anymore and stood up. It was the president of my sister's company. Enough already. This is embarrassing. You have no right to criticize the groom. What do you think about your terrible attitude towards your own sister? The president's angry voice made my sister's face contort in fear. For one, I didn't attend your wedding for your sake. I wouldn't have come if you weren't the sister of Rachel. Suddenly, my name was mentioned by the president, and my sister's eyes widened in surprise. Huh? Who are you talking about? 
Rachel is a goddess to many of us business owners, rescuing countless companies from the brink of collapse, he continued. In fact, with the guidance of my mentor, I have been working as an advisor for corporate revitalization and growth. Starting with fortune-telling and life consultation, I used my abilities to show companies the path they should take. All my advice was spot on, and the companies that sought my help experienced a rapid resurgence in business, achieving a V-shaped recovery. As a result, I had earned titles like teacher and goddess. My sister's company had also consulted with me five months ago, and thanks to my advice, it had been reborn as a stronger enterprise. The president, grateful for my assistance, attended the wedding today as well. I had no idea. You're not just a basement-dwelling unemployed nobody, are you? My sister said, finally realizing the truth. Thanks to my thriving career, her assumptions had been shattered. I now earn several times what you do. Despite contributing significantly to the household income, our parents never seemed to care about me. They thought that money was from Julie. Oh, we thought July provided that money. They said, misunderstanding the situation. There was no way Julie would have been contributing money to the house. The wedding reception turned into a chaotic scene and was called off. Naturally, all the guests were fully refunded their wedding gifts. I've already signed a contract for an apartment under my name. I can't afford it on my own, especially now that he's unemployed, my sister sobbed. Jack retorted, you're the one who signed the contract. I don't know anything about that. The wedding was a complete disaster, resulting from my sister's malice towards others. She may argue there were reasons for her behavior, but they didn't hold up. Afterward, Julie divorced Jack and claimed alimony. Since Jack was jobless and his parents didn't have much, she couldn't receive much alimony. She barely managed to pay for the wedding venue, let alone the apartment she had contracted. The place that was supposed to be their love nest was never occupied and was canceled. However, the debt didn't simply vanish and Julie found herself heavily burdened by loans. Moreover, her outrageous behavior at the wedding quickly became known among her colleagues leading to a rapid decline in her reputation. The CEO had no choice but to demote her. With no place left in the company and having lost her pride as an elite, Julie wanted to quit and run away, but she had to bear the embarrassment for the sake of loan repayment. She continued with a trivial job in a hardly noticeable basement storage room. Jack and his parents, who had failed in their plan to leech off Julie, were now scraping by with occasional day labor. Naturally, Jack's elder brother, Gary, had cut off all ties with his parents and brother. The parents quickly gave up on Julie when she hit rock bottom and tried to cozy up to me instead. To them, I said, I've had enough of being manipulated by you. I'm cutting ties. Goodbye forever. I declared this and moved out to start a new life in a newly rented apartment. They took in the fallen Julie, who was struggling to make ends meet. Julie's salary was drastically reduced, and she couldn't possibly contribute to the household expenses, of course. I stopped the money I was contributing to the house as well. Without my financial help and unable to lower their standard of living, our parents quickly became exhausted and struggled every day to make ends meet. They were panting and stressed, trying to maintain the lifestyle they had grown used to but without the necessary income, it became a daily challenge. On the other hand, my work was thriving. I was able to guide many companies and individuals in the right direction, using my abilities to help them succeed. My reputation grew, and more clients sought my advice. This success brought me a sense of fulfillment and financial stability. It felt good to finally be appreciated for my skills and to see the positive impact I was making on others' lives. After the wedding incident, I started dating Larry. He had been so honest and brave during that chaotic time, and we grew close. He recently proposed to me, and I accepted. If everything goes well, marriage could be in our future. Larry is a man of pure heart, with no dark shadows lurking within him. Unlike the people my sister had surrounded herself with, Larry was genuine and kind. 
I'm looking forward to building a happy life with Larry. Together, we dream of a future filled with love, mutual respect, and understanding. With him by my side, I feel a sense of hope and excitement for what lies ahead. We've talked about our plans, our dreams, and how we want to support each other in everything we do. As I reflect on everything that has happened, I feel a mix of emotions. I am relieved to have cut ties with my parents and sister, who never appreciated me. I am proud of the person I have become, despite the challenges I faced, and I am grateful for Larry, who has brought light and love into my life. Looking forward, I see a bright future. I am excited about the possibility of marriage with Larry and the life we will build together. With him, I know I will never have to hide who I am or feel unappreciated. Our love and partnership are based on honesty and mutual support, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us.